Another part I really like about QuickBooks Desktop is the whole customization of workflow. So let me go to the home page here real quick and kind of show you the premise of what I'm talking about. Let's say for example, I start taking in an order and I record an order with a sales order, something that I don't have in QuickBooks Online, but I have in QuickBooks Premier and above. And I want to take a sales order for something I'm selling to a client, but I'm going to subcontract that work. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, on sales order here. And I can have multiple templates. This is one of the real cool things about this. I can have multiple templates. And let's say I want to call this uh, sales order here. I'm going to call it order acknowledgement. And I can actually quarter, call it whatever I want. Um, because uh, as part of my workflow in my industry or whatever, um, order acknowledgement is the typical uh, wording that we use to record an order. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and book an order acknowledgement for uh, this particular project here, this customer, this project. And what I'm going to do is I want to create a series of items that are tied to a vendor. And by, by, by that I mean the items that are exclusively used to contract a vendor for that work. Uh, so for example, let's say I want to go to the vendor center here while, uh, while I have the sales order open. And then I have a vendor here called Miami Contractor. Let's just call it that. So we'll call it here Miami Contractor. And Miami Contractor is somebody that we're going to use as a subcontractor uh, for work. So there's Miami Contractor. And I'm going to go to my item list here. I'm going to click on list and item list. And I'm going to click, I'm going to create a new item here. Uh, I'm going to create a new service item. And I'm going to make that service item a hourly contract labor. Okay. And we'll point this to one of our consulting income accounts. And the key component here, I have to make this item a double-sided item by clicking on this service is being used in assembly or performed by a subcontractor. And <clears throat> I want to make the I want to make the preferred vendor in this case that Miami contractor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. But the key component here is I, oops, I have to make sure I select an expense account. So there's a subcontractor labor cost and I'm going to hit OK. But the key here is I'm going to use uh, one item called hourly contract labor, another one called uh, total ma contractor materials. So I'm going to click another one here. I'm going to make it the exact same thing. I'm going to make it a service and then I'm going to call it contractor materials. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to click on this little <clears throat> same checkbox here. And I'm going to put here on the cost, I'll just put one. On the sales price, I'll put one. Later on, I'll explain why I'm, I'm putting the one there, but that's, that's really an important piece. And I'm going to have that go into subcontract labor cost as well, because I'm just kind of going to lump sum the materials for the subcontractor. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick my default vendor there, Miami Contractor. And the income account for this one, I'll pick the same income account I have when I charge my client for the consulting. Let's say these are small and we really don't break down materials and labor, but just for the purpose, of having uh, the same account there, so I'll hit OK. So now I have uh, two items in there, but now I want to group them. I'm going to show you what I mean by grouping them. I'm going to go to an item, I'm going to click on New, and then I'm going to create a service item, and I'm going to put here Miami Contractor. So I'm using the contractor's name, I'm using the contractor's name to create a, a general item here, and I'm really not going to hit the little checkbox. Uh, I'm going to put in the description here, do not use because I'm not really going to use that item and I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. So let me go back to my <clears throat> con hourly contract labor. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit and then I'm going to make that a sub account or a sub item. Sorry, not, not a sub account, a sub item of that Miami contractor group. There it is. Okay. And then I'm going to look for my contractor materials, which is right here. I'm going to edit that one and make that one part of my same group here or my same item as, as a sub item and what I'm doing is I'm just going to make sure that both of these items which now are, are sub items both of these items are pointing to Miami contractor and this one let's say for example I charge my client typically $90 an hour and I pay my subcontractor 45 so this is just a part of the setup not really the, the funnest part of it is a setup but once it's set up it works pretty well and then I'm going to create now a group a new item here item type group uh, where basically I'm going to put all those items together into a single one. So I'm going to put here this one called 
contractor and I'll put here Miami contractor corp whatever code I want to use and then here under item I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and break this down and put here contractor uh, labor and then I'll put here the second one which is contractor materials and this stuff's gonna make sense very very soon so I created the two items I made them preferred vendor to my Miami contractor vendor I created the item and I created the sub items and I created the group now this becomes really powerful as part of your workflow because as a QuickBooks user you want to be able to put your orders together really really fast so my client calls they make the order uh, for some consulting work that we're going to go ahead and subcontract so I'm going to click on item here and I'm going to look for that group that I created that's already pre-set up for me there it is and basically my two items come in as default which is great um, and that's a, kind of the beautiful thing about the groups and then here this is the rate that I'm going to charge my client and let's say I'm going to charge my client for 15 hours worth and then the materials and this is key here um, just because the this rate here doesn't transfer over on the contractor side uh, but the amount order does um, so here on the rate I'm going to leave that at one and let's say for example I, I, I spent to spend about I expect to spend about $500 in materials. So this is my, my total order uh, here in the description. I'm going to put here uh, total order consulting fees. Okay, And I'm going to go ahead and click preview just to kind of get an idea for what it looks like for the client. It's just one line item that says total order consulting fees 1850. The client gets an order acknowledgement form for what they ask but us internally we know that we have a breakdown here of materials and hourly contract labor and this is going to make tons of sense in, in a second because this is the part of the workflow that QuickBooks Online doesn't have that QuickBooks Premier and Enterprise have that I think is superb so you know we, we give the client the order acknowledgement they agree they sign whatever it happens to be and then what we do is we click on create purchase orders I'm going to go to create purchase order here and then I'm going to click here where it says create purchase order for selected items and the key here is that if I click this uh, one for selected items it would actually allow me to automatically create the purchase order to that preferred vendor so that's kind of the trick that um, the reason why I selected a second option is because I want that preferred vendor to be the one that gets chosen by default so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK here and what's great about this now I got my contractor work order which is basically just a purchase order that I went into the customized layout screen and I changed uh, the name of it the same you know with the same way so because we're not really purchasing an inventory I'm calling a contractor a work order which makes more sense and also here on the ship to I changed it from ship to to site location because that's gonna make a lot more sense when I give this to my contractor so the great thing about uh, the workflow here that I really didn't have to sit there and type anything I, this all straight went straight from from an estimate or from a sales order which is the example that I use and here's the, my total hourly fee now at my vendor rate and then here under contractor material notice I, I did um, mention right that, that if I put the dollar amount here and uh, now the rate wouldn't move over so that's exactly what I meant so now I can actually go on the rate and and tell my contractor let's say I agree with my contractor that I would charge the client 500 but the contractor would charge me let's say 75% of it so that's why I left the rate at one because then I can just put here 0.75 and it'll retain my original $500 number here but in the total is $375 and this is actually what I'm gonna pay my contractor this is a real neat thing about the workflow I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and close and I'm gonna hit save and close so now I have um, a sales order and a purchase order both open for that job so I'm gonna show you some really uh, nifty reporting tricks here I'm gonna go to reports custom reports and transaction detail and then I'm going to click on here dates uh, I'll click on all because I'm not really worried about that and here where it says total I'm going to go ahead and go total by customer and then here where it says filters I'm going to click on <clears throat> posting status okay because we're talking about purchase order and sales order so um, anytime I'm going to show a report that is going to contain any one of these I have to make sure that it's a non posting transaction in this case and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and that basically shows me everything that's not posting but I want to uh, in this case just focus on that particular job there so I'm gonna I actually forgot what the job was so let me just double check here and go to sales order and click previews okay that was it uh, Jim and S Carter project 11 perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my report 
and I'm gonna click on customize report I'm gonna click on filter then I'll go down to name and then I'm gonna go down to that particular job only right because this is gonna be a report that basically just just tracks my order so what's really cool about this is I haven't even posted a sale I haven't even posted an expense and I already have uh, basically like a profitability report per se right so now I kind of really do have an idea of what my total sales are gonna be and what my total costs are gonna be so I find this uh, kind of interesting um, now it depends on what I want to see if I want to see the, the, the details or not I would go to customize report in this case and click on filters and then go to detail level and then go to all except summary that way I don't I don't see that that 1850 there that's kind of bothering me that's why I hide okay that way I only get the actual net amounts and what's neat about this is I can actually build a report that has POs and sales orders and I can actually have a parallel profitability projections on top of uh, the actual stuff that post 